In part three, which is also the last part of my multi-part series on uh, maps on Flutterflow, let's cover how you can visualize markers on your map widget, either from your database document or from a page parameter. Hey, Jasper from Nomo Coast here. I have built a location-based photography app called LightSource recently with Flutterflow. And here is everything I've learned about maps on Flutterflow. This will be the last part of this series. I'll be showing my learnings by using my own app, LightSource, as a demo. Now, let's get right into it. Let's talk about single markers first. Both Static Map from Mapbox and Google Map offer the ability to visualize a single marker. If you want to visualize one single marker that does not need to change based on user's input, the most straightforward way is to use Mapbox and just input the lat and longitude in the static map. This works on a landing page where you want to show maybe where your business is, um, but for complex applications, that wouldn't be enough. On an application, you would want the map content to differ based on user's location or their inputs. Or if you want to use the Google Map widget to either add interaction to the map or visualize multiple markers, uh, there's actually no such option for you to directly input lat and longitude information. So you will want to use variables to dy dynamically configure the map content. There are two ways that you can get the variables set up. The first option is to use a variable that does not need a backend query. This includes something like a place picker value, which changes the marker based on user's input in the place picker. The current device location, which changes based on where users is using your app, if they give permission. One important thing to know for Google Map is that you have to use lat long as the marker type, otherwise the place picker value would not work. Because if you pick document type, the widget will expect to get something off a backend query, not a variable that's available right away. Another way to visualize the marker with a variable is by defining a page parameter, which can receive information from other pages. An example is something I covered in part two, where I would pass the map center lat long info from the map page to the create page. So users can create a new post without the need to pick a location. All right, but what if you want to visualize markers from information stored in your database? For instance, on LightSource, Every photo uploaded on the, to the database will have a photo location field that stores the associated lat long information about that photo. How can I visualize my photos as markers on the map? Here comes the second way to visualize markers dynamically, which is to get the lat and long from your database with a backend query. You can either run the query on the map widget itself, or you can run the backend query on the parent element. For example, on my light source app, for the Google map where I visualize photos as markers, I actually run the query directly on the map widget where I query the list of photos that are uploaded to the platform. And when I pick the variable, I will select document as type and then select the photo documents query results. On the same app, I also have this feed for all the posts that are made on the platform. And along with the post title and description and user info, I want to show the single marker location for each post. In this case, I actually pick, I actually place the query on the list view widget, the parent widget, so that every child within this parent element can share the same query results. So for the static map widget here, I'll simply go to set variables, select post documents, and then select the location lat long field. And for the title, I will simply set variables to post title and des description to post description. The key takeaway here is that you have to run the query either on the parent element or the widget itself. If you run the query from another widget that is not either the parent or the widget itself, we cannot use the query results as our variable. The second takeaway here is that for single marker, your query result should be single document. But if you want to visualize multiple markers, don't forget that you need to query a list of documents. Otherwise, it would not work. Now you have the markers visualized. Let's go a step further and add some interaction to the markers. On LightSource, you can actually tap on the markers and bring up a bottom sheet that shows all the photos that is associated with that marker location. So how do we do it? The logic is simple. We will add a marker on tab action to the map widget. And we select show bottom sheet as the action and select the bottom sheet that we want to bring up in our component input here. 
Now we need to pass the parameter to let the bottom sheet component know what information to display on bottom sheet. I have a page parameter called lat long defined here, and we just need to send the value here. So for a single marker, it is straightforward. Simply select the same variable that is set for the marker document. For multiple markers, it's a bit different because Flutterflow needs to first figure out which marker document that you have tapped on. So you have to choose marker document here and select the lat long field associated with this marker document. If you do not see marker documents here, it's either because you're not using the document type here or you are on a single marker. These are two important things to get right before you could even see the marker document show up here. And there you have it. This is how you can visualize markers and also add on tab interactions to it. This is the last part of my everything I learned about maps on Flutterflow uh, series for now. Uh, hopefully I can expand my knowledge and probably uh, use some PubDev uh, widget that is not natively offered by Flutterflow. I will continue building my app on Flutterflow and share my learnings. So if you want to fo follow my journey and if you find my video useful, uh, consider subscribing. I also have some vlog style videos where I document my building journey with uh, Flutterflow and also sharing my experience launching products and growing a product. So if those are your jam, consider subscribing as well. Until next time, ciao.